This is what we see when we look into the back of the eye with instruments. There's an opening at the back of the eye where all the blood vessels come in and out of the eye to supply it with nourishment and all the nerve cells taking the messages of sight back to the brain exit. This pink donut that you can see are the nerve fibers cascading out of the eye. The view is a bit like sitting in a helicopter looking down on a large waterfall where the nerve fibers are the water and here they are cascading out of the eye. The pale area in the center is called the cup. It's a three-dimensional structure. The cup is an absence of nerve fibers and what happens in glaucoma, and here is somebody with glaucoma, and you can see that the pale area by default has become deeper and bigger and the pink donut has become eroded and thinner as the nerve fibers have been damaged by the disease. And this is somebody who over a period of 13 years became decidedly worse and you can see that in 2007 they had virtually no nerve fibres left and the cup has filled the entire space. This was a person who dropped out of treatment completely. So how do we find this? Well, by looking at the optic disc with instruments we can get the impression that you saw from the photographs and that's a qualitative assessment, but we can now do it quantitatively. We can actually measure the thickness of the nerve fibers with a variety of instruments, and this is one of the latest ones called an OCT. And what the OCT does is actually measure the nerve cells as they head towards the opening at the back of the eye and creates a profile of the thickness of the nerve fibers. And the normal appearance is this double hump that's the normal anatomy of the nerve fibers. And if over time you can see the nerve fibers becoming eroded on one side, still normal on the other, the machine software highlights that the nerves are becoming thinned in one region. And that's measuring it quantitatively to an accuracy of hundredths of a millimeter. And here we have an example of someone who's lost almost all their nerve fibers and the, thick, the thickness of the nerve fibers has been reduced to an almost flat line right around the 360 degrees. So going from qualitative assessment to quantitative assessment has allowed us to be much more accurate in being able to, to detect progression and therefore adjust treatment to account for the fact that whatever's been done up to that point in time is not quite doing the trick to make the person safe. And we have over time changes in the measurements and one of the things I want to mention is the difficulty sometimes in interpreting the results. So here we have a patient where it looks as though things might be a little worse but then the measurements the next time actually seem to improve and then they get worse again. And then finally you can see the machine is highlighting consistently that there is a progressive thinning of the nerve fibers. And that tells you that the technologies, as accurate as they are and as helpful as they are, have to be used appropriately and sensibly because there is a certain amount of error of measurement, noise in the system, which has to be accounted for. If a machine shows a change and that's not reflected in any other tests that are done, it may be an artifact and the test may need to be repeated to show that the result is in fact valid and that things need to, to change. And that's because any change in treatment often carries increased risks. If you are losing vision, you're prepared to take increased risks from your treatment in order to save the vision. But you don't want to take those increased risks if the vision really isn't getting worse.